Today we are going to learn about the multiplication and the division properties of equality. Our learning target is to solve one step equations by using the multiplication or division property to reveal the value that makes the statement of equality true. So we're trying to figure out what value x needs to be or whatever the variable is to make this a true statement of equality and we know that for this equation x needs to be 25 for it to be true because 25 equals 25. Overview just to recap on inverse operations inverse operations are opposite operations that undo each other so we've got the opposite operation for addition is subtraction and for a subtraction it is addition for multiplication it is division and for division is multiplication so what that means is if we have x plus 5 and we want to solve for x and it is connected to this plus 5 we need to rearrange this equation so we have x by itself in order to get rid of this 5 that is being added we will do the inverse which is subtraction and we'll subtract what we want to eliminate so we'll subtract 5 and we'll make sure to do this to both sides. This is A, this is SPE, sorry. And when we do that, what happens is the addition is undone by the subtraction. 5 minus 5 is 0. So we have now x plus 0 equals 5. And we know that anything plus 0 is just whatever is being added to 0, which is, in this case, is just x. So x equals 5. So we use these inverse operations to help us rearrange equations to eliminate things. So here we now have the two properties, multiplication property of equality and division property of equality. Let's first begin by defining the multiplication property of equality. This property states that an equivalent equation is created when both expressions or sides of the original equation multiply the same value. So here we have the equation 3 plus 2 equals 4 plus 1. And we know that both of these expressions can be simplified to the value of 5. So they are right now, they are equal. So what this property is saying is that if we multiply a number to the left side, so for example up here, if we multiply a number to the left side and we multiply that same number to the right side, the result will be an equation that also has two numbers that are the exact same number when you simplify. So I'm going to choose an arbitrary number, let's say negative 2, and I'm going to multiply this negative 2 to both sides, the right side and the left side. And I'm multiplying it to the entire side. If I simplify this, we can simplify 3 plus 2 to 5, and then we can bring the negative 2 that is being multiplied down, and this simplifies to negative 10. Here, on the right side, five, 4 plus 1 is 5, and we can bring down the times negative 2, and 5 times negative 2, this is also negative 10. So you can see here, our equation is still true. This is an equivalent equation. You did not change the fact that both the left and the right side are of equal value. Now, common mistake when we are using this property. So I've rewritten the equation that we, that we used earlier. So here we have the same exact equation, but it is now in red because I'm going to show you the, this mistake that students oftentimes make. Students make the mistake of just multiplying the number to only part of one side, not the entire side. So for example, let's use no negative 2. If we only mul multiply negative 2 to the 3 and not the 2, then we're not multiplying it to the entire side. Likewise, if we multiply the negative 2 to just the 1 and not the 4, we are not multiplying it to the entire side. It is important that when you multiply both sides, you multiply the entire side. Watch what happens when we only multiply to part of one side. We will not get an equation that has equal value on both sides. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 2 is negative 4. And this equals negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and 4 plus negative 2 is a positive 2. So you can see here we have negative 4 equals positive 2. This is not true. We have done, we have used the property incorrectly, and as a result, we get an equation that does not have equal values on both sides. So it's important that we multiply to the entire side. Another common mistake that we see students make is let's say we have the 
equation negative 2x equals 4. Here, the negative 2 is being multiplied to the x. So we should do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. However, students do not students see the negative sign or the minus sign in front of the negative 2 and automatically think inverse. Okay, inverse of subtraction or minus is addition. We need to add 2 to both sides. Negative 2x plus 2, these do not eliminate. They're not like terms, but some students will think that they are, so they will do this. x equals 4 plus 2 is 6. And this is not the case, because if we take the value back and plug it in for the x, we get negative 2 times 6 equals 4. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. And negative 12 does not equal 4. So this is incorrect. You should just look at the minus sign in front. It's important to identify the operation or the sign between the number you want to eliminate and the variable you're trying to solve for. The division property of equality. This is the same as multiplication, except an equivalent equation is created when both expressions of the original equation divide the same number. So if we take 4 plus 2, which we know is 6, and 3 plus 3, which we know is also 6, and we divide both sides by the same number, so we can re we can write it like this. Let's divide by 2. Or we can divide like this. The result will be the same. So here, on the left side, we get 4 plus 2, which is 6, divided by 2, equals, and we can add these fractions together. We've got common denominator. 3 plus 3 is 6. Keep the denominator the same, which is 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So you can see if we divide correctly to both sides, it does not change the fact that we have an equal, we have an equal value on both sides of the equation. Let's get into some examples today. Here's our first example. It says find the value that makes the statement of equality a true statement. Negative 5x equals 35. The first step is to identify the variable. So here's the variable that we're trying to find what value it represents. Our second step is to use inverse operations to isolate the variable. So we have a negative 5. Should we add? Because Adding would be the opposite of this minus sign. No, this is the mistake that I was talking about earlier. The negative 5 is being multiplied to x, and the inverse of multiplication is division. So we need, we need to divide the right side and the left side by the number we want to eliminate. So we will divide by negative 5. Why can we divide by negative 5? We can divide by negative 5 because the division property of equality allows us to divide both sides by the same number. So our new equation is negative 5x divided by 5 equals 35 divided by negative 5. Sorry, it should be negative. And we have divided by negative 5 on both sides. This is the division property of equality. Now we can go ahead and simplify. So this will be our justification here. We will simplify. So when we divide negative 5 by itself, we recall that anything divided by itself is 1. So negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. x equals 35 divided by negative 35 divided by negative is negative 7. Now, we know that 1 times x is the same thing as x equals negative 7. Why is 1 times x the same thing as just x? Because 1 times anything leaves the value unchanged. This was the multiplicative or multiplicative, multiplicative identity. So when there are things that are being multiplied in front of x, like this negative 5 was, our goal is to get a 1 in, that is being multiplied to the x because we know that the multiplicative identity does not change the value of whatever x is. So we can solve for x by getting a 1 in front. This is, this is the strategy that we should use. Example number 2. Here we have the equation negative 3 equals x. And this line right here, this is a fraction line, but it is also division. So x divided by 7. So our first step is to identify where the variable is. The variable is in the numerator, 
and is being divided by 7. So we need to use inverse operations to isolate the variable. Well, the operation between the number and the variable is division. We know that the inverse of division is multiplication. So now all we have to do is multiply by the number we want to eliminate. So we will multiply by 7 because that is the number we want to eliminate. So we can rewrite this as 7 times negative 3 equals 7 times x whoops divided by 7. So we've multiplied 7 to both sides. Why can we multiply 7 to both sides? Because the multiplication the multiplica the multiplication property of equality. So we can abbreviate this as MPE, multiplication property of equality. Now we can go ahead and simplify. We know that 7 times negative 3 is 21, and a positive times a negative is negative 21. Equals 7 times x is 7x, and 7x divided by 7, well we know that 7 divided by 7, anything divided by itself is 1, so we are left with 1x. Now we have 1x equals negative 21, which is the same thing as x equals negative 21. Why are these the same? Because of the multiplicative, multiplic multiplicative, multiplicative, or multiplicative property, sorry, multiplicative identity. I promise by the end of this video I will say this word correctly. Let's move on to example number three. Good. Example number three. You can see that we've already done step one, which is to identify where the variable is. So our second step is to use inverse operations to get rid of the variable. And here we have a fraction that is connected to the variable. We've got negative three being multiplied to the x, and we've got a four that is being divided. And so an easy way to think about the inverse of this fraction is to multiply by the reciprocal. So the inverse of a fraction is the reciprocal. So another way of thinking about this is if we multiply by what is being divided and we divide by what is being multiplied, essentially we are following the property. So we need, we need to multiply both sides by 4 divided by negative 3. So if I rewrite this correctly, the equation will now be 4 divided by negative 3 times negative 3x divided by 4 equals 4 divided by negative 3 times negative 6. And we can write this over 1 if it helps. Why can we multiply this value to both sides? Because the multiplication property of equality allows us to do so. Now we can go ahead and simplify. So here we have 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12. We are multiplying straight across with fractions. So we have negative 12x over negative 3 times 4 is also negative 12. And this equals 4 times negative 6. This is negative 24. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And we can further simplify this. So we can say negative 12 divided by negative 12. Anything divided by itself is 1. So we have 1x. And we have negative 24 divided by 3 or negative 3, sorry, this is positive 8. So we've simplified. Now our last step, we know that 1x is the same thing as x equals 8. Why? Because the multiplicative identity. Good luck on the problem set.